and welcome to our lesson on spreadsheet functions. What I want to do first is just quickly run through what you should know at this point. You should know what a spreadsheet is and you should know some of the basic functions at this point. So what is a spreadsheet again? Okay, it's used to capture information and data and it's used to process that information and then uh, create some kind of chart or apply some functions to it to make sense of that data. You should also know that a spreadsheet consists of columns and rows and that creates different cells, little blocks on your screen and that each little block has a specific or unique name called a cell reference like A1 or B1 or C2. Then also you should know some of the basic functions. For instance, equals sum, that's used to add a range of a data, equals average, min, max, count. And if this doesn't sound familiar to you, then please go back to the grade 10 syllabus as soon as possible to revise those concepts. Right, so we're going to now quickly look at our cell references again. So let's have a look at our spreadsheet that I have here. Uh, most of the time we work with what is called relative cell references. So let's have a look at our formula that I've typed into cell D2. It's equal C2 times B7. Okay, so equal C2 multiplied by C7. So it's the unit sold times by the cost per unit. Perfect. Okay, so this guy sold 20 units. We're going to multiply it by 200. Now, if we were to copy this function down, which I already have done, okay, you'll see that the three remaining people, it seems like they haven't sold anything. But if you look at the units, they have sold something. Okay, and Tauling sold nine, Boy Pelo so sold five. So something's wrong with our spreadsheet here. And this has to do with the type of cell referencing that we're using. So we're using relative cells. They can change. Um, but what we'll need to do with cell B7 is we'll need to make that an absolute cell reference. So we're basically going to freeze that cell in place because when we copy our function down, if I go to the second one, for instance, have a look here. Here it says C3, which is correct, multiplied by B8. And oh dear, there's nothing in B8, and that's why we're not getting a value in that cell. Okay, so we're going to go to our original one. We're going to go to cell B7, and then in Office, you can just press F4 on your keyboard, and that will automatically insert little dollar signs. One in front of the column a number, or column letter, and one in front of the row number. And that's going to freeze that cell in place. So when you now copy it down, you'll actually have values here. So let's look at the second one again. So now it's taking C3, the relative cell, and it's multiplying it by an absolute cell, which is B7, and now your information is correct. Okay, so usually in your paper, so they'll tell you when to use absolute cell references, but um, it should be obvious to you when to use it. Right, so now we're going to move on to autofill, and we just use the autofill handle now to copy our formula down, but let's just quickly revise this. So, for instance, you could, in this first column, put in 1 and 2, and then if you highlight the 1 and the 2 and move your cursor to the bottom right corner until you get this black cross, that's your autofill handle, and you click and drag, the computer will automatically count for you. So it will keep on adding 1. You can also count in 2's if you wanted to. It's always important to at least give it the first two numbers so it can see what you're doing. So highlight 2 and 4, get your autofill handle and copy that down. And then if you really wanted to, you can count in 42's even. Same thing, highlight and drag it down. Okay, right. The same can be done with days of the week. Here you only need to insert one uh, entry. Just make sure that you spell it correctly. Uh, you can do the same with your months. Okay. And if you wanted to sell tickets and you want to create ticket numbers that you might want to put into a spreadsheet, so you can do a mail merge later on into a Word document, you can do that. It's just important to have your um, letters first and then the number. Then it usually works quite well. So I've added ticket 001, and now I'm hoping it's going to go to ticket 002, and off you go. And obviously you can autofill that all the way down up to ticket 800. We usually do that at our school for our fun days and stuff like that. 
Right, okay, now we're quickly going to look at rounding. And there's two ways that you can round your information off. One is through just uh, formatting, where you're just decreasing the uh, number of decimal places that are visible to you. And the other one is by using an actual round function. And I just want to illustrate the difference between the two here. Okay, so um, let's quickly have a look here. If I were to take this number, 10.555, and I'm going to format it now to only show two decimal places. You can do this by selecting the cell and then going to your number section. And here's your increase decimal and decrease decimal options. So I'm going to decrease my decimal options. Let's decrease it to one. That's fine. So it says 10.6. Okay, right. But now I'm going to use the round function to do the same thing. So I'm going to put in equals round open brackets, I'm going to click on the original number, comma, and then I'm going to put in how many digits there has to be right at the end. So I'm just going to say, right, there should be one digit right at the end. Okay, so it looks exactly the same. But what you need to take note of is that it, it really isn't the same. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the original number and I've added 0.5 to it. There's my little formula. So it's A2 plus 0 0.5. Okay, I'm just going to copy this across and this is going to show here this is B2 plus 0 0.5 and here we've got C2 plus 0 0.5. Okay, so let me just undo. What did I do now? Okay, there we go. I want you to see this. Okay, so when it's rounded off or when you cre um, use your decreased decimal, you're not really rounding it off. You're just changing the display. And just be aware of the fact that that could influence what people think the correct answer is. Okay, so rounding off using the round function and rounding off using increase and decrease decimal is not the same thing. Okay, so be aware of that. Read your questions carefully and make sure you use the correct f um, way of rounding your information up or down or off. Okay, right, so the next function we're going to look at is the small function. So in the past, we used to use equals min, and that would find the lowest number in a range, or the smallest number in a range. What we're going to look at now is something like the second lowest, or the third lowest number in a range, and we're going to use the small function for this. So I'm going to use equals small, open brackets, and then read your label here, it says array, so highlight the cells where you're going to look for your information, in this case C2 to C5, comma, and then you're going to put in your variable there, so the three. So I want the third lowest, because here it says third lowest. So I'm going to put in a three for, to get the third lowest number. Okay, press enter, and there's the third lowest number in the range of information that I highlighted. Okay, in the same way, you can use large to get the second or third highest number. So Last year in grade 10, you did equals max, and that would find the absolute highest number or the biggest number. And now you're going to use large to find something like the second highest number. So highlight your range again, comma, and you're going to type in the two. Right, and there's your second highest number sold. The next function is our count if function. And this is very useful because now you can add criteria to what you want to count. Okay, so you can tell the computer, go count all those students who got above 50%. How many people in the class got that? Or go count those who got above 90%. Okay, so in this example, we're going to count the number of people who sold more than 30 units. Okay, so there's my units sold. So I'm going to type in equals count if, open my bracket. Quickly highlight the range. Be careful not to include your heading. That's not necessary. Okay, comma. And now because I'm using a relational operator, the computer sees that as a symbol. So I have to use the quotation marks. So quotation marks, more than 30. So greater than 30. It doesn't include 30. It's greater than 30. And then close your quotation marks. If you get confused with the quotation marks, because you don't have to use them when you use numbers, just use them regardless. Okay, it will work if you have just a number as well. Right, and then I'm going to close my brackets and press enter. 
And then this says that two people sold more than 30 units. And if you look at your data, that's correct. Let's move to count blank. Okay, so the number of people who have not recorded their sales. So equals count blank. Whoops, count blank. Open your brackets and highlight your range. There's no criteria here. The criteria is already in the function name. Go count all the blanks. Close your bracket, press enter, and you can see here there's two people who haven't entered anything. Just be careful though, and remember that a space is a character. Okay, so if I were to go to Ntaleng for instance, and I go to her unit sold, and I just type in a space, and I press enter, you'll see that the computer now thinks that only one cell is completely blank, although it looks blank to us. So just be aware of that, a space is a character. Let's move on to sum if. Previously, previously, we looked at sum, and you would use equal sum to add uh, columns of uh, data in your um, spreadsheet. But now we're going to add some kind of criteria to it. So we're going to tell it only add it if something is true. Okay, so let's have a look at this. We've got two groups here, group A and group B. I want to know how many units were sold by group A only. Okay, now obviously this is easy. We can say, yeah, it's 50 plus 5, it's 55. Um, but usually you would do this in a spreadsheet where there's lots of information, and then it's not so easy to quickly just do that in your head. So now we're going to tell the computer to do that for us. So we're going to say equals sum if, open your brackets, we're going to highlight the range. Okay, um, okay sorry, you're going to highlight the range over here in column B, because you first need to tell the computer where to go look for your criteria. Okay, so you're going to highlight that range first, comma, and then because we're working with text, you're going to use a quotation mark, and I'm going to type in the A. So it's going to go find the A's, and then it has to add whatever is next to that A, or next to that column. All right, close your bracket, press enter, and there's my answer, 55. Okay, that's your sum if function. Please go practice this function because it, people do find it more difficult because you've got three different sections that you need to work with. And make sure you don't swap those two around like I almost did now. Then your power function. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can use equals power. So equals power, open brackets. I'm going to click on the number, comma, and I'm going to used to the power of 2, so I'm going to use that cell B2, and you can press enter, or you can say equals, click on the number, and then you can use this little symbol for the power symbol, and then select cell B2. It's exactly the same thing, and you can just copy that down. Right, why did that not work now? Let's quickly see. Okay, what's the problem here? I didn't use an absolute cell reference. Okay, so here we're multiplying by something that's actually not correct. So let's go back to our original one. So B2 is going to be this, the reference that we want to use over and over again. So let's make that an absolute cell reference. And then let's copy that down for the rest. There we go. Now we're right because we've used an absolute cell reference. Right, and then our random function. So to use your random function, you can type in equals R-A-N-D for rand. Okay, open your bracket and close your bracket. That's it. And this will create a random number between 0 and 1. Okay, so just be aware of that. It will probably be a decimal number. You can just press enter. And um, every time you open up the spreadsheet, it will create a new random number. Right. Okay, now the only real difference not really a difference, but what I've seen in open office um, calc is that it sometimes requires you to, instead of use a comma in between your arguments, you use a semicolon. That being said, um, I've seen with the new operating system, it just depends on your regional settings. So I've got some computers in my lab that require a comma in between your arguments. So let's go to some if, for instance, I just want to open this up again. So I'm talking about this comma in between your different arguments. So on some computers, it's a comma, and on other computers, it's a semicolon, okay? It just depends on what your computer has been set to. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
because that's obviously going to have a big influence. If you don't use the correct symbol, then your function's not going to work. Right, and that concludes our lesson on spreadsheet functions.